heard the Messenger of Allah say, He is not from us, the man who imitates the women and the women who imitate the men. So even if they're trying to walk like women, so as to disguise themselves, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, peace and blessings be upon him, has freed himself from these individuals. He has freed himself from these individuals and their act. The purpose, now we mentioned, the purpose of the, of the woman's dress is explained in the Qur'an. Why do our sisters dress like this? Maybe the non-Muslims, they don't understand the reason for this. So we'll explain something of the history from a verse in the Qur'an to explain it and then explain further why this was such a heinous and evil act. The purpose of the women's dress is explained in the Qur'an where Allah says, O Prophet, say to your wives and your daughters and the women of the believers, to cover themselves with their overgarments that they will be known and not be harmed that they will be known as believing women and they will not be harmed so the purpose of the covering of the Muslim sisters the Muslim women that you see is that you will know that they're Muslim women and that they will not be harmed because what happened during the time of the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him that sometimes the women if they traveled by night if they walked outside of their homes by night there would, be, there would be men, criminal men, who would try to rape them and try to harm them. So if they were to see these women adorning themselves like this, then they would know that these were Muslim women who were striving to be righteous and noble and honorable, and they would leave them alone. So the purpose of the, the covering is so that the woman is known and therefore left out of harm's way. So what makes this action of those even, even more evil is they have contradicted the very meaning of this verse. They have contradicted the very nature or the reason of why this verse was revealed in the first place. Because what they have done by their action is brought about harm to the Muslim women. They have brought about harm and put the sisters in harm's way by this action of theirs. So this act of men wearing the dress of Muslim women, whether in the commission of a crime or otherwise, is a great sin in Islam and is totally rejected by our upright way, rather was an action that was cursed by the Prophet of Islam. Peace and blessings be upon him. The next question is, what does Islam say regarding cooperating with the authorities in stopping crime in society? And I think this is a very important question. And this may be an issue that some people may have no understanding with regard to this. So we want to clarify very, very very surely by the permission of our Lord of how important this matter is and we're going to quote now from one of our scholars Sheikh Ahmed and Najmi who again is from the scholars of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia and we learn from him with regard to this matter and he's Salafi and we learn from him regard to this matter about cooperating with non-Muslim authorities whether they be informing against Muslims or other than Muslims, he says, it is permissible if the non-Muslims seek from us to cooperate with them in the prevention of those things that Islam prohibits and fights against. From the prohibition of corruption, including things like drug dealing and drug smuggling, and to cooperate in combating it in all of its forms and types. And also, the prevention of crime and stamping it out and punishing the perpetrators of these crimes and from these crimes the crime of terrorism and this includes assassinations and bombings and revolutions and kidnappings and other than this things of which when they occur the result is great fear and panic among the people of which they cannot establish a stable society and there is no safety and security he continues, and Islam calls to safety and security and praises it. So Islam commands with stability and the spread of peace and tranquility. And it prohibits terrorizing citizens and spreading panic and fear among them. This is Ahmed Najmi, who was Salafi and from the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. After one of these affairs that had taken place, one of the officers who was killed in the city of Philadelphia, after it took place, 
the Salafi community reached out to our scholars for some advice. And we wanted to be known that there's an old saying that absence of knowledge of a thing does not necessitate its absence. Just because you do not know that a thing takes place does not mean it did not take place. So when these articles say, why haven't the Muslims condemned these actions? Why haven't the Muslims spoke out against these actions? We say we have. And the recording that I'm about to quote from was stated by the scholar Sheikh Ubaid al-Jabri from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia also no more than a week after Offer Lisbinski Liz, 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 was killed. Is it Lisbinski? No. After he was killed. No more than a week after he was killed. And this particular recording was disseminated amongst the people of our city. So because the author of this article did not know that this took place, does not mean it did not take place. And is it not from journalistic integrity to ask the people who ascribe to being Salafi, what is their statement with regard to this before saying that they have not condemned it? At any rate, we quote from the Sheikh Ubaid al-Jabiri, who was a former teacher of the Islamic University in Medina in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. He was called to, to, for some advice after the officer was killed. And we began to see some of the problems that were going on in our city. So he was called for some advice for the Muslims. Now listen to what the, the scholar, the, the great scholar says. My advice to the Muslims in America and Europe. I advise them to display all of the good and beautiful qualities of this religion. Because these qualities are praiseworthy and lofty. They spread safety and security in the land and establish justice among all people. Whether they practice Islam or whether they practice other than Islam from the Christians and Jews. And I say to you, indeed your neighbors from the non-Muslims are observing you. And they are observing your actions and your statements. So if they see from you, O oh Muslims, that you keep your word and you refrain from harming people and you honor your contracts, and you are truthful people, and you safeguard people's lives, property, and honor, and stay away from oppression, then they, the non-Muslims, will feel at ease with you, and they will be comfortable around you. And this is from the means of inviting to the way of Allah. And how many from the non-Muslims accepted Islam? Based on what they witnessed of noble character and good manners from the Muslims. The Sheikh, he continues, so spread the noble qualities of your religion. And if certain things take place from some individuals among the Muslims of crime and transgression upon your neighbors from the non-Muslims, from acts of murder and armed robbery or other than that, then announce to all of the people that you are free from them and their actions. Announce to all of the people that you are free from these criminals and their actions. For indeed these individuals, even if they ascribe to Islam, indeed Islam is free from their actions. And those Muslims who practice Islam correctly are also free from them and what they do of savage and evil behavior. Can we be any more clear? Can we be any more clear on the position of the Salafis with regard to these affairs? The great scholar Sheikh Ubaid al-Jabri called them savage and evil behavior. The questioner then after this says to the sheikh, the questioner, in this recording he says, as you know of what happened in Philadelphia, of three individuals from the Muslims dressing in women's garb and robbing a bank. So because of this despicable act, one of the assailants and an officer was killed. And many problems resulted from this. So what are your thoughts on this incident? And what is your advice to the Muslims in Philadelphia? Again, this is again from the great scholar Ubaid al-Jabri, who is Salafi from the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The Sheikh, he says, the answer. I have said previously that if acts of transgression occur from individuals who ascribe to Islam, it is upon you to free yourselves from these individuals and their actions. For indeed, Islam and those who practice the pure teachings of Islam are free from these corrupt actions. Those who truly follow the way of the Prophet Muhammad 
Honor the contracts between them and their neighbors from the non-Muslims. 